My name is Andrew Stotts and welcome to Valuation Masterclass Case Study, where I'm going to be valuing Tesla. Let's get into this. This is a valuation originally done by students, Archie, Pantilla, and Kirada in my Valuation Masterclass boot camp number 13. These three graduates worked uh, separately and then later together in producing this report. And then I went through it and made my adjustments so that it matches my opinion. So what you're going to hear is my opinion about this uh, company, Tesla. So let's get into it. Remember that this is not investment recommendation. So I title it, the good old days could be gone for a while. So our research shows that Tesla is a sell based on a target price of $139, implying a 31% downside. I'm deriving this target price from a DCF value based valuation using a WAC of 10.6 and a terminal growth of 5%. Now, the key stories here are first, the growing autonomous car market is a revenue growth catalyst. Second, the new Redwood model could offset the Cybertruck's potential setbacks. And the energy segment could transform into a major revenue source for the company. Now, the major risk is delays in launching and ramping up production. Supply chain shortages could also harm. And for those of us following Tesla very closely, we know that the supply of lithium, lithium ion batteries, and most of that is coming from China. So there's another risk factor there. I do want to highlight the price chart down at the bottom. So let me just uh, remove my face there for a second. What we can see is the share price was as high as 358 back in February of 2022. And now is down to about a little bit under 208. So let's say roughly $200. And the point is, is that things are going to probably stay rocky or get worse before they get better. So let's go into a little bit of the background on this story. So, <clears throat> of course, Tesla is an American electric vehicle and clean energy company founded in uh, 2003, and it specializes in EV battery products and clean green energy technology. It operates in two main segments, automotive and energy, with the former currently the main source of revenue. The company manufactures and sells a range of vehicles, including the Model Y, the Model 3, the Model X. And Model 3 and Model Y are the best-selling cars with around 96% of 2023 revenues. But you're going to hear in just a moment that in the next few years, that could change dramatically. So Tesla holds around 19% share of the global battery electric vehicles market, and they're selling about 1.8 million cars. Uh, they serve mainly China and the US. So let's look at the first story. The growing autonomous car market is a revenue growth catalyst. Now, this industry or this market is expected to have significant growth with projections from a rise from $1.6 billion in 2022 to $20 billion by 2029, according to Fortune Business Insights. Tesla, a prominent player in the market, offers an autonomous driving system called Tesla Autopilot. In 2023, Tesla's Model 3 and Model Y, both offering autopilot capabilities, accounted for 96% of the company's automotive sales and were the top-selling electric vehicles worldwide. With, with this strong market presence as the first mover and the projected growth of the global autonomous car market, we expect Tesla to achieve high double-digit growths in the next five years. Now, the next one is an interesting one, the Redwood model. This is a product that doesn't exist yet, and uh, but Tesla plans to launch this new car model called Redwood in second half of 2025. Now, I was just watching a video uh, of some real Tesla, Tesla fanatics who are saying it isn't going to be till 2006, till this thing hits the market. It's to be priced about 25000 which is basically making it super affordable. And the production of Redwood may require Tesla to reallocate source resources, potentially impacting the production of their leading models, the Model 3 and Model Y. Still, I think that we'll be they'll be able to handle that. 
I, there was talk on some of the chat rooms about this production happening in Mexico. Tesla has not disclosed Cybertruck deliveries or commented on production volume, suggesting that the Cybertruck may not have performed as expected. So I anticipate the Redwood model could generate positive results from 2025 onwards, but probably more likely to deliver results in the next, I would say, few years. Let's just look at the example of Cybertruck for a moment. And what we know is that it's been promised for a long time and it's been very slow to deliver, which is understandable. Here, they're trying to revolutionize car production. For instance, a unibody trying to keep the cost down, seriously down, revamping the whole way they're doing their production. It's very unlikely that that's going to hit the market in 2025. Or if it does hit in 2025, it's not going to have a substantial impact on revenue probably until 2000. And 26. And this is part of the reason why we have a sell recommendation is because it's already in the price. People know that this is coming. They don't know all the details, but expectations are there. And I suspect that the company is not going to be able to deliver on time for those expectations. Elon Musk is famous for being really positive in his expectations. So I would be a bit conservative. And that's part of the reason why I'm relatively negative on the share price right now. So now, Let's take a look at the next point. And that point, basically, one second there. So the, the, the third point I was making is the energy segment could transform into a major revenue source. According to precedent, precedence research, the global energy storage market is projected to reach around $170 billion by 2032. That's a CAGR of about 14%. Tesla's energy generation and storage business contributed 6% to total company revenue, meaning it's tiny right now. But this EGS revenue grew by 54% year on year, driven by the deployment of Megapack energy storage product, which reached about 14.7 gigawatts, 125% year on year rise, so massive. Megapack is a large scale lithium based battery energy storage designed by Tesla to boost the stability of power grids and avoid outages. Each unit boasts a storage capacity of over three megawatts, which is enough to power 3,600 hours uh, homes for an hour. Also, McKinsey projected world lithium-ion battery demand to grow by 27% yearly to reach 4,700 gigawatts by 2020 or 2030, from 700 gigawatts in 2022. This is driven by China, U.S., and Europe. So. I see the segment as a great growth opportunity for Tesla in the upcoming years and could become much more than the very small 6% that it's contributing to revenue. So it's a positive story, but it will take time for that to come up. So let's look at the automotive industry for just a moment. The industry is shifting to technology era, and China is a promising market for EVs, of course. The automotive industry is shifting from hardware to software emphasizing enhancing software functionality and services. In fact, even Toyota says, oh, we're a software, you know, we're doing a lot more software. I think it's hard for most of the car companies to be software driven compared to uh, Tesla, which has really built that into their business. By 2005, consumer spending on EVs is expected to reach about $627 billion, <laughs> increasing by 17% compared to 2023. And the dynamic has allowed new entrants in Europe and abroad, especially in China. Indeed, in first quarter of 2023, China was by far the largest EV market with 55% of global EV sales, a total of 3.4 million units. Moreover, thanks to China's comprehensive supply chain advantages, low costs in logistics and labor and beneficial policies promoting low carbon vehicles, China is a competitive and crucial market for automotive manufacturers. It actually brings me back to my days studying my PhD in Anhui province in China. I remember going out uh, in the daytime, we would walk out of the campus and what we would, we'd almost get hit by motorcycles because there's so many motorcycles that are battery driven. This was 10, you know, eight years ago that were battery driven and they're so quiet that you can't even hear them. I'm sure if you've been to China, you know what I'm talking about. So you can see a chart on the right, which shows consumer spending on EVs is rising and expected to rise about 17%. Uh, 
Now, the next thing for the industry is technological and infrastructure enhancements benefits the production efficiency. The EV market is expanding due to technological advancements, government policies, which we've seen a lot of incentives and infrastructure support. According to McKinsey Global Institute, the progress in robotics and AI technologies could potentially replace 30 to 60 percent of tasks in various occupations. This technological advancement helps to enhance manufacturing and supply chain efficiency. Additionally, the industry also benefits from infrastructure support. According to Grandview Research, the EV charging infrastructure market could reach $121 billion by 2030, growing at a 25% CAGR. This factors, uh, these factors should foster the growth of the EV production. What about the next? And that is batteries are the new industry control point when EVs become the norm. So more than a third of the value of a battery electric vehicle is associated with the battery. And of course, much more than a third of the weight of the car. China was the largest supplier of materials for lithium ion batteries used in Tesla's EVs based on Nikkei's supply chain analysis. This means that increased geopolitical tensions between US and China could eventually make it difficult for Tesla to buy batteries. This is a major risk. Therefore, to mitigate the impact of geopolitical tensions, especially in Europe, automotive manufacturers need to diversify their inputs and production or put factories in areas where they sell products to consumers to avoid supply chain disruptions. Let's look at the quarterly result. We can see a big drop in EBIT margin. Uh, in fourth quarter of 2023, Tesla experienced a slight revenue increase by about 3.5% year on year. The company saw a 23% year on year decrease in gross margin and a higher year on year decrease in EBIT margin uh, of 48%. And Tesla reported fourth quarter recurring EPS of $2.27, which was 110% up year on year and 328% uh, Q on Q. So if we look into consensus, we'll see that over 44% of analysts hold a neutral view on Tesla and 17 analysts have issued buy recommendations. The mean target price indicates a potential 3.9% upside, which means the market is neutral as opposed to my 31% downside. Now consensus also predicts a decrease in revenue growth from almost 19% in 2023 to 14% in 2024. Analysts expect a slight increase in gross profit margin from 18% in 2023 to 21% in 2026. There is also an expected drop in net margin in 2024, followed by slight increases in 2025 and 2026. Let's look at the revenue structure of the company. Uh, in 2023, Tesla reported a revenue of almost $97 billion, with an automotive segment contributing 94% of sales. Actually, you don't really need to say much more. 94% is massive. And we can see that it's deriving that revenue 47% from the United States, 22% from China, and 31% from uh, other international locations. Now, this is my FEMR uh, four elements that I look at, fundamentals, valuation, momentum, and risk. Overall, Tesla looks neutral compared to its peers regarding fundamentals, valuation, momentum, and risk. And Tesla stands out among the top 20% of 1,900 non-financial companies in the U.S. to have strong fundamental ratios. Its asset turnover has recently increased. And I think I'm going to highlight a couple of things here that I thought were interesting the first thing is that asset turnover has gone 76, 73, 94, 112, 113. This is a huge move from 76. And basically what you can see, that's causing the ROE to go from negative 10.5 to 5 to 21 to 34. And then, okay, back down to 23 or so. That's an incredible rise. It's ranked in the bottom 30% for its price to book and PE which is just crazy, crazy high right now at a PE ratio in the 70s and a price to book ratio about 14 times. And ranked in the top 30%, both price and fundamental momentum delivered pretty good results. So momentum just continues to be strong. Now on the risk basis, it's ranked very low. It's not so much because of balance sheet risk, but it's mainly due to a very high beta 
which is causing a lot of price risk, which to me is one type of risk. Now, this is the world-class benchmarking scorecard that I look at, and I really think that this scorecard is such a great example of economies of scale. And I want to talk about that for just a second because we always hear about the concept of economies of scale, but what is it? Well, basically, a company has to overcome its overhead. And a big company like Tesla or an automotive company has a lot of overhead to overcome. But at some point, the investment in the overhead just is going to grow slowly while the revenue should be cranking up. And that starts to deliver economies of scale. We call it also operating leverage, where increases, significant increases in revenue are not causing significant increase in expenses. Tesla is one of the best examples of this. So let's look at uh, the financials here to understand. Now, this is my scorecard. A one is world-class and a 10 is terrible. The key thing we can see here is that the ROA, the profitability has gone from 10 to six to two to one to one, and from 10 to six to two to one to one for profitable growth meaning it's now financially world-class as of the fourth quarter results. And also we can see that that's being driven by super strong revenue growth, which is causing the net profit margin to rise and improve. A great example of economies of scale really kicking in in 2021. We can see in 2021 was when they went to a two and a one and a one. So, here is a forecast for revenue that we've got. And basically, it's going to be a massive increase in revenue, particularly as a company tries to launch its uh, new vehicle, the Redwood, which will take some time to get out. But that will be okay because you can see we're forecasting until 2028. So there will be, I think, some pretty massive increases, more than a doubling of profit in the next five years. Balance sheet. It's going to be a big buildup in cash and fixed assets growing. Here we can see that debt levels actually, uh, long-term debt is very minimum. And also short-term debt is very minimum, meaning the company is financing itself mainly from its growth in equity. Remember that the company is not yet paying out dividend. In fact, here we can look at the cash flow statement and look at the dividend paid here and it's been zero, and I'm expecting it will be zero. At some point, they probably will pay, to pay a dividend, and that's why I have added in dividend in later years, and the result of that is that you still you can use a dividend discount model, but it's just very, very far out. And here we can see some of the ratios, and I think I would, I would just highlight that we have a fall in gross margin that happened in 2000. Let me get my pen here. This fall in gross margin happened when they started cutting price and they've kept that price cutting down here. Now, even with a gross margin coming from 25.6 down to 17.6, the company is still making a, a net margin that's very strong. And uh, I'm going to go back to this slide. It's still making an EBIT margin, let's say, of 8.2%. That's an incredible performance uh, for Tesla. So really impressive on that front. Let's continue on and look at the ROE of the company. And we can see that the asset turnover is rising and rising. It did come down a little bit in 2023, but it's causing a very strong R ROE. Now, there was an exceptional item in the uh, net profit here. I think it was coming from share uh, from tax tax uh, incentives, uh, but if we look at it, we can see that the ROE is let's say fifteen to twenty percent. Now here is the free cash flow to the firm, this bottom line, and we can see that I'm expecting seven, twelve, sixteen, eighteen, and then a big jump in twenty seven, and that is giving me some pretty strong numbers for the free cash flow. And if we look at the price to book, we can see on the forward price to book multiple Tesla looks expensive. And if we forecast its return on equity to be around 17% right now for 2024, that's higher. Uh, that's higher than the sector average, or sorry, it's higher in 2025, uh, where we are forecasting about 20.8%. And 
the U.S. market right now, the expectation is 7.6. I think that's because most people are expecting some sort of recession by 2025. But no matter how you look at it, uh, Tesla is very expensive on a price to book basis. If we look at it on a PE basis, we can see that Tesla does have very strong growth, but you could say that it doesn't really offset the, uh, the, the it's just so expensive that the growth just isn't probably worth getting. Now, let's look at the cost of equity here. I'm using a 4% risk-free rate. Remember that risk-free rate is to infinity and equity risk premium for the US market of about 6%, giving a total return of the market at about 10% and using a beta of about 1.25 for Tesla gives me a 11.5% uh, uh, cost of equity. And if I look at my expectations about weighted average cost of capital, uh, basically there's a tiny amount of debt, right? 13.4% is what I'm expecting for debt as a percent of total capital, which means that the cost of equity goes down just slightly from 11.5% down to 10.6. You can see the forecast below and where it comes up with the um, the value, but I'm gonna use the free cash flow value. And what we can see from the free cash flow value is a share price evaluation of about 139. Now, in our sensitivity analysis that we do on the other side, the optimistic case assumes a sales growth of 22.7% until 2028. And that results in a target price being bumped up, but not by much. To 142 and conservatively in the pessimistic case sales growth is assumed to be about 18.5 that yields a value of about 135 so pretty small movements there you can see our sensitivity right there and then we have our main uh risks the first is delays in launching and ramping up production the second is supply shortage which could harm tesla's production and high reliance on the lithium ion batteries, particularly from China and full self-driving may get banned by the law or totally restricted by the government. So that wraps up the summary of the valuation for Tesla. It's a share price estimate or a valuation estimate of 139. That's a downside of 31%. Again, I want to compliment and encourage my students for the foundational work that they did on this. I did some work on top of that to come up with my own assumptions, but I think they were solid in their analysis. So way to go, way to go for the students. Remember, this is not investment advice. My name is Andrew Stotz. This is the Valuation Masterclass Case Study. Thanks for tuning in.